used to hate vegans, yeah. I used to hate vegans, yeah, before I was one. Used to think that they were hippies, yeah, I thought they were dumb. Then I did a bit of research and I opened my eyes. So I wrote the song to hope one day that you realise what we're doing to our planet, yeah, it just isn't right. So we got so what are these? The sausages or the vegan ones? What these are the vegan ones. Yeah. Vegan ones? So you yeah. can barely tell the difference. I can tell. I mean, they, they stink, right, no, for one. they're delicious. Right? They're delicious, actually. Because they've got the same seasoning. Ooh, God. I like them. They've got nice crisp oh. pastry. Yeah. The vegetarian sausage is nicely flavoured. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good look, Piers. Oh, my God. I would eat Why that. Why would anyone eat mm. this? So, um, the first question is, it's a bit random, but what do you think of vegans? As one, I vegan? like them. <laughs> I think there's definitely a stereotype, yeah. and I don't always think it's a very attractive stereotype. Yeah, um, and even, like, myself, when I start, like, if it comes up in conversation, because, you know, it's always those things that they're like, yeah, I'm a medical awkward. student, I'm, yeah, a, I'm a vegan, and yeah, yeah. you go, like, I'm a vegan, and then, and then people go, like, oh. So what do you need from animals to survive that you can't get from a vegan diet? I don't know what a vegan diet is. If people want to do this, get on with it quietly, do whatever you want to do. Time of the caveman, for God's sake, it's nature. Do you understand <laughs> what happens in jungles? Uh, we've developed, we've, met, we've, we've grown canine teeth. Where? Canine Show me teeth. yours. Seriously, <laughs> vegan <laughs> vegetarians, go and get your own sweets. Well, what do you mean it's not obvious? People eat meat just stupid, not eat meat. That's just stupid, it's not a real thing. So. The vegan movement has exploded. Um, when I first went vegan six and a half years ago, seven years ago, um, there was just, I didn't really know anyone and nobody was talking about it, it wasn't on the news, it wasn't in the media at all. Um, and as my friend Kerry MacArthur says, the only thing on the internet was like a cry for help more than anything else. Um, now it's everywhere, you know, every restaurant's got a vegan menu, every chain is doing vegan food, all the supermarkets have got vegan sections. Um, there are thousands of vegan products and plant-based products kind of like appearing everywhere. So back in 2015, uh, Plant-Based News started as a YouTube channel and my good friend Klaus Mitchell, he's the one who came up with the idea of Plant-Based News as a kind of entity, as a, as a, as a, a news platform. But it was just a YouTube channel to begin with. Hi everyone, Robbie here from Plant Based News. We're super excited to introduce you to Alison Argo. Alison is the director of The Last Pig, which is a brilliant film that came out recently. And it kind of, kind of what it did was it brought together lots of people from all over the world uh, who would read the news and kind of tell the story of new products or laws or animal rights or all kinds of different things. I want people to come to Plant Based News and see Plant Based News as, a, as an authority on these topics so that they feel secure in their decisions, so that they feel sure about what they're doing when it comes to what they eat, where they buy, where they shop and what they feed their children. Um, and when people have that certainty and that security then they'll keep making those positive and ethical choices. So the media loves to portray vegans um, as villains or the enemies in our society. Isn't that a, such a backwards way of thinking? You know, we're people who want to see a kind of more compassionate world, yet we are being told that we're militant, that we're kind of aggressive, that we're forcing our beliefs down the throats of other people. But our whole entire lives and our whole focus is to kind of be more compassionate and be more kind. Um, now, people like Piers Morgan, he is a clown, he's... Um, He's kind of like a puppet to the media of that sort because he wants to focus on controversy. He wants to get people talking about vegans. He's been talking about vegans non-stop for the last like 12 weeks. He's always bringing it up on his on his morning show um, because he, he enjoys that controversy. I think he's pretty harmless, um, but at the same time, his rhetoric is damaging because it's always trying to create fear around what we're doing when what we're doing is actually very positive. What I have a real problem with is radical vegans storming into supermarkets like these three did with their mates, right? Terrorising old people doing their shopping for Christmas, right? You say that people who are on vegan diets are malnourished and people who are malnourished are more likely to commit crimes. The, the myth is that vegans are really weak and shriveled and haven't got decent bodies. No, that's pale and uh, ill. I'm trying to demonstrate that it's a load of rubbish. It's quite the opposite. I'm sports ambassador for, for Veganuary. It was last year as well, which at 63, well, 62 years of age is, is quite, you know, it's quite a compliment. I go to events and um, do demonstrations of physical fitness, 
physical strength, balance skills, which um, at 60, well, I keep on going on about my age, <laughs> getting really old. At this sort of age, nobody's doing this. Nobody's doing it. I grew up vegan, eating plant-based foods. And because of that, I was, I did feel different from everybody else, but I wasn't particularly bothered. Because I, I was at primary school, everyone went into the hall and ate lunch which made me sick, just even to smell it. I went into the cloakroom and ate my fruit and veg or whatever that my mother put in a little box for me. Uh, so I've always been up here, even as a child, I've been different. I was 50 years of age before I met my first other vegan. I was 50, 2006. And I was beginning to think I was on the wrong planet and then Come about 2010, 2012, on Facebook, social media, suddenly you're seeing groups, vegan groups, 120, 130,000 people. I think, oh, this is really good. I'm not different after all. Our reach on our website is incredible. We went in the beginning of our first month, we were reaching about 3,000 people a, uh, a month, and now we're pushing 1.2 million unique visitors a month. Uh, every quarter we, we pull in about, you know, nine and a half million page impressions. And I, I started to eat uh, vegan. Oh, you're a vegan now. So with regards to celebrities, people ask us this question all the time because a lot of people say, oh, but why celebrities? You know, it's a very like vacuous and um, what's the word? Like kind of superficial world, but actually, you know, at the end of the day, these people have millions of people following them. They have a huge, huge reach. So when a large celebrity starts to talk about veganism, they are influencing millions of people. Um, people like Miley Cyrus, you know, she's often talking about veganism, animal rights, being kinder to animals, not wearing fur, and she's unashamed, unashamed about it. She's really, really kind of focused on being clear and direct. For me, I want to bring a message, which is veganism and that there doesn't have to be torture in fabulous fashion. But a lot of celebrities want to hide their veganism and they don't want to talk about it. I think celebrities who are vegan have a moral obligation to talk about it and to focus on it and to not be ashamed of it because we need, we need to normalize it. We need to make sure that everyone sees the word vegan and thinks about what it means and how they could potentially get involved with it. My name's Evie Giraud and um, I'm a lecturer in media at Kiel. And um, I do quite a lot of research about um, vegan politics and how veganism is represented in the media because it's something that I'm just really interested in. Veganism is represented in the media in quite problematic ways normally. So on the one hand, you've got all these really large scale campaigning groups like PETA, who I think a lot of vegans would see as quite problematic for being slightly um, over the top with their representations and for using quite sexist imagery, etc. I feel like that kind of violent kind of piece of footage does need to be encapsulated in something else. It needs to be wrapped up in some kind of narrative or some kind of voiceover that guides a person in and then kind of warns them of what they're about to see. Because I think when you kind of shock people, or you slam this kind of stuff into people, they do kind of turn away from it. And I think you're going to turn less people um, you know, you're going to bring less people to the movement if you do it in that way. But I think, you know, these videos where you see this kind of violence on Facebook and on social media, they get millions and millions of views and thousands of shares. So people do, do engage with them and it can work. You know, a lot of these commentators argue, well, it's impossible to be totally vegan and, you know, these people are being ridiculous and extreme, etc. Um, they've obviously been high profile figures such as Pierce Morgan, um, you know, being very critical about Greg having this kind of vegan sausage roll and seeing it as really excessive and, you know, a company changing itself for this kind of moralistic group of people and, you know, getting very angry about that. They do these gotcha moments where they think that they've caught you out in your hypocrisy. So sometimes it's been quite jokey, like I can remember when I was a student being at a party and people coming up with all these scenarios, um, like, would you still be vegan if this? And it was stuff like, Oh, if a cat in your neighbourhood died of natural causes, would it still be vegan to wear it as a hat? And things like that, that were obviously kind of silly. But then you get much more kind of serious equivalents of that, where people genuinely want to argue with you about it. And I think it's got 
it comes from a perception where people think that you're judging them. And I, you know, I really rarely would talk to people kind of openly, and I certainly would never comment on anyone's eating choices because I think it's really self-defeating. But people always will comment to me about mine and will always kind of have something to say about it. I've begun to realise that some vegans are becoming sort of radical fundamentalists when it comes to <laughs> veganism, which I find increasingly irritating, but putting that to one side. I'm, I'm one of those people that, you know, sort of I'll listen to any argument, but the, but, but the more militant you are, the more I'll back away Absolutely. from you. So, you know, if I, if you know, make me that angry, if you frighten me that much, I will eat a sausage. A lot of people say that, like, when you first go vegan, it's like, you wait, it's like waking up from a nightmare because you, you realise how, how messed up the world is. And, and everyone else is just so blind to it. So I was about 18, 19, it was my first year of university. Um, so the first half I was like completely like non-vegan and then um, throughout the second half of my first year, that's, that's when I started to make the change. My dad was diagnosed with colon cancer um, and I, I was like, shit, like, maybe like reevaluate like my health because I thought we were all a healthy family. Um, and we've always eaten like homemade meals and lots of vegetables, lots of fruit. And I thought that having like meat, like, every day was healthy. Um, so the World Health Organization, which is the largest organization of um, health in the world, the WHO, they came out with a report in 2016 which said that um, processed meats such as um, bacon, ham, salami and sausages are a class one carcinogen, which is the same class as cigarettes and asbestos, which means that it definitely increases your risk of developing cancer specifically colon cancer. As I did a lot of research and did more research into like the, the causes of such illnesses, um, I realized that, that like colon cancer is largely um, like caused by processed meats. Now he's fine, he's been vegan for like two, two and a half years, whatever, and he's never felt better. He's like over 50 and he feels better than he did when he was like 40. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely don't think there's any sign of him going back to eating meat. Not everyone is at the same place you are. Not everyone is going to go vegan after one conversation or one film. Some people are going to take a little bit of time. So it's really important to choose your message very carefully and to be patient with people. So anybody who actually makes an effort, who's aware, once you, once you get the awareness, it's like a little seed that you're planting in somebody's head and it will grow. My own dad, who I never, for a million years, never thought that he would ever go vegan. He's 60, really set in his ways. He did veganery last year and ended up being vegan. And I was like, what the hell? Trump got into power, Brexit happened, my dad went vegan. <laughs> I was completely blown away by it. Um, you know, and if my dad can go vegan, anyone can do it. Clearly, some people will try it because it's fashionable, it won't stay vegan. Um, but I think it's, it's sort of slowly moving towards the mainstream and particularly with things like climate change, I think that's been a big driver um, for encouraging people to, to sort of um, give up or at least cut down on um, the consumption of animal products. What I wouldn't want to happen is for it to just be seen as a fashion choice and for it to kind of lose its connection with other political kind of issues. I, de I would definitely say there's a stereotype that vegans are like, pushy, loud, outspoken, um, and like to say like when they meet someone new, like, hi, I'm vegan. But that's definitely not the case. I've actually found that when I meet someone new, if, if, if there's a friend that knows I'm vegan already, they would like to just like say and like take the mic like, oh, he's vegan, um, which is like sometimes inappropriate, sometimes it's a joke, whatever. Um, but I definitely wouldn't say that it's like, obviously it's a big part of my life and, and how I view the world, but I would, I would only, I only like to speak about it when it's necessary and when it's appropriate. Um, and it is a big part of my identity. It's my entire life. Like I work as a professional vegan. <laughs> That's what I do. I teach people how to be vegan or I encourage people to be more vegan. That's really my whole kind of MO really. But that's not for everyone. Like, not everyone's going to base their whole lives around the movement. My job is the movement. My job is to try and encourage more people to join the conversation. I'm vegan, but I'm also Buddhist as well, you know? But I don't let those things define me completely. Everyone's on their own journey. We're all human. And some people don't see things the same way that you do, and some people don't. Um, some people take longer to see something than you might do. I could pick on anybody and say, well, you're different because you do this and nobody else does that or you think like that. 
I don't mind being different. We're all we're all different. It's not a big deal. It's being being different as a vegan is not a big deal at all. Literally last week, even someone said to me, "Oh, you don't look like a vegan." It's like, well, what the hell does a vegan look like? like I'm a human and I have a vegan diet. I used to hate vegans. Yeah, I used to hate vegans. Yeah, before I was one, I used to think that they were hippies. Yeah, I thought they were dumb. Then I did a bit of research and I opened my eyes. So I wrote the song to hope one day that you realise what we're doing to our planet. Yeah, it just isn't right. So we gotta come together, gotta put up a fight. I used to hate vegans, yeah. There's children going hungry while we fatten up cows. Watch everything's cowspiracy, go on, have a browse. They say that we need meat for iron protein and that, but their things are in plants, minus the saturated fat. We need dairy for calcium, it's all just a lie. That shit only exists because of demand and supply. They forcibly impregnate cows, but you can watch a tape if it wasn't to a woman.